Complete Control is one of my favorite plugins, but it's also one of the most confusing. This is a real shame because once you understand it, it becomes a plugin that you'll want to use in every project. Seriously. Okay, so Nesto, and in this video, I'm gonna show how most of you will use the newest edition of Complete Control. But first, is Complete Control a keyboard or a plugin? Well, it's both. Complete Control is, is a fancy MIDI keyboard that comes in a bunch of different sizes. Sometimes they have big screens, and sometimes they have tiny screens. I love these keyboards. The build quality, design, and keybed are excellent, but you're doing it all wrong if you aren't pairing them with Complete Control, the plugin. The Complete Control plugin is the bridge between your native instrument software, your DAW, and your Complete Control keyboard. Once that bridge is in place, all the knobs and buttons become pre-mapped, which speeds up your workflow and makes writing a whole lot more fun. Plugin integration is the best thing about Complete Control, so we'll start there. If you don't have a Complete Control keyboard and don't plan on getting one, you will not be using this plugin at all. So stop watching this video because you'll be using Contact instead to access all your Contact libraries. If you want to learn more about that, I'll have a link here in the description. The moment you open up this plugin, you'll find all your instruments, whether they're a Contact library or a synth like Massive. You can use your keyboard or mouse to browse your instruments. Using your mouse is exactly what you think, just clicking around the filters, scrolling to an instrument, and double clicking one to get started. But let's run through the navigation with the keyboard. In the bottom right of the screen, you'll see that I have well over 30,000 presets that I can browse using the encoder knob. Now, none of us want to spend hours listening to presets, so fortunately, there's an easy and effective way to find the perfect preset with the filter. Let's say I'm looking for a dirty electric guitar from Native Instruments. I'll use a brand knob to find Native Instruments. And since I know I want a guitar, I'll turn the type knob to select guitar. And then I'll select electric under subtype. The under character, I'll select dirty. From here, I can finally choose the electric vintage product. And I can even choose which sound bank I want to browse. I'll select melody. And there we go from over 30,000 to 21 results. And as I turn this knob, I'll get a little preview of how each one sounds, which is really valuable. But you know what? I wanna see if I favorited any presets, so I'll hit the favorites button right here. And what do you know? I favorited a preset called Glasgow. I'll press the encoder knob to select it. And once the instrument is loaded up, you'll see on my S61 Mark III that we have a nice looking graphic, but even better, all the knobs are pre-mapped to the most essential controls. There's usually a few pages, uh, so you wanna just click the arrows here. Really handy stuff. And this doesn't just apply to native instrument products. Any sample library that is NKS compatible integrates with Complete Control. If you have a non-NKS product, um, you can still use it inside of Complete Control. For example, I'll click this dropdown to find Serum, and here it is. You'll see that the knobs are pre-mapped, but they're really random. So what you can do is click this knob icon on the top uh, in the top menu, then click the unlock button. Now you can go through each knob and assign it however you want. After that, you wanna click this drop down and select file and save as. And now you have your custom serum set up. I strongly recommend doing this, even if it just takes a few minutes, it helps you in the long run a whole bunch. Now, another thing you can do is load up effects inside of complete control. If you hit this button, you can select a new slot. From here, you can choose an effect and yep, they are pre-mapped too. Now there's a lot more I can talk about like the arpeggio and scale mode and other great functions. I'm not gonna go through them because it takes forever, but I do have a video linked below if you wanna dive even deeper. Before I talk about DAW integration, if you're looking for a great affordable MIDI keyboard, I strongly recommend the M32. You can check out the S49 or S61 Mark III if you want something that's like really premium. I have an affiliate link down below that you can click. Now let's talk about DAW integration. It's an underrated feature when it comes to MIDI keyboards in general. Today I'm using Logic, but this integration will differ from DAW to DAW. We'll start with recording. After setting up your instrument, you'll press the metronome button to turn on the metronome, and then press record to start writing. If you're wondering why I'm playing like a drunken sailor, it's because I wanna show you that you can just hit quantize to quantize your MIDI, just like that. One of my favorite things is to write in automation with the knobs down here. So hit the automation button and then find the parameter you want to automate, press play, and you can just automate away. Let's loop this section to hear it and ensure that it's working.
is cool. But if I didn't like it, I can click undo, which is one of my favorite buttons of all time, but I'm down with it. So I'll hit shift and press undo, which makes it a redo button. Now let's move on to DAW navigation. This one's quick and you'll be using the encoder knob a lot for this one. When we're in plugin mode, turn the encoder knob, moves the playhead in the timeline. You can toggle between different MIDI or audio clips if you click to the left or right. Clicking up and down toggles between tracks. The last thing I wanna show you is how this integrates with mixing. This one's really cool. Click the DAW button right here and on screen is where we can turn our knob to determine the level of each channel. You can also mute a channel and if you hold shift, you can solo it. Clicking the encoder knob to the left or right will take us to different tracks. And finally, holding shift and pressing up on the encoder will let us adjust the panning of each track. Keep in mind that I barely touched my mouse. Everything was done with the keyboard. I've been using Complete Control for a few years and I absolutely love it and I'm sure you won't want to go back once you try this out. Now, Contact is another essential plugin for Native Instruments that's also pretty confusing. If you want to learn how to use that, just click the video here. Thanks for watching. Later.